We are now going to do a hybrid proof for the security of the scheme. Now, hybrid proofs have three rules. Rule number one is that there will be a first hybrid, okay, H first, let's say, and the last hybrid, let's say H last. These two should be the two things that need to be indistinguishable. So essentially, in a hybrid proof, our goal is to prove that this first hybrid is indistinguishable from the last hybrid. But instead of doing it at once, we will do it using hybrids. So we will define the second rule that says, consider two neighboring hybrids, HI and H i plus 1. Distinguishing these two hybrids should mean breaking some underlying scheme, some underlying assumption. Remember, we said hybrid proofs, one of the main uses of them is when some primitive is repeated multiple times. So here we have g n plus 1 repeated multiple times within g and plus p. Essentially, we will define our hybrids such that the only difference between two neighboring hybrids would be something related to g and plus one. Okay? This is our underlying assumption. So if the adversary can distinguish between one of these, we will show that we can distinguish, let's say we can break G and plus one. The third rule says there must be polynomially many hybrids. So in some sense, this will mean that we will call our H first as let's say H zero and our H last as let's say H some let's say PN for some polynomial N. Okay? Let us define our hybrids for this particular proof, and then it will all become more clear. We will define hybrid I as follows for this particular proof. So hybrid I says, pick a random value S that is N plus 1 bits, sorry, N plus I Okay, so pick a random n plus i bit value. Then let me label these with let's say levels. So this is the zeroth level, first level, second level, third level, etc. So I, if I run gm plus one once, this corresponds to first level. If I run it twice from the beginning, second level, three times from the beginning, third level, etc. So the last level would be p and level. So hybrid i says, pick some random s that is n plus i bits, and then continue this construction, okay, from level i. So start at level i, okay, and continue there. Let's see what this means for some values of i. Consider H0, the zeroth hybrid, the first hybrid essentially. What it would mean is we would be picking S that is how many bits? You see it, N plus I, I is 0, N bits. And then start at level 0. If I start at level 0, so I have N bits of random value. I start at level 0, do these things. This essentially corresponds to running G and plus PN. So pick this S and then run G and plus PN using this S as the input. It will give us some random value, let's say R, a pseudo random value R at the end. And the length of this R would be N plus PN bits. Let's look at 
h p n so when i is equal to p n what it would mean is pick s that is of length n plus p n so i is equal to p n according to the hybrid definition this means we are picking s that is n plus p n bits and then continue from level p n if I continue this construction from level Pn, there is nothing further to do. Essentially, I can say that my R, that is the output, let's say, would be equal to S. Now, if you consider this hybrid definitions, H0 essentially is picking a random S, running Gn plus N, and then outputting. Okay, so my H0 is in some sense the pseudo-random experiment. What is HPN? HPN is picking a truly random value of the same length as the output of my pseudo-random experiment. So this is my random experiment. Remember, pseudo-random generator definition, security definition says this experiment needs to be indistinguishable, computationally indistinguishable, from this experiment. So if I manage to prove this H0 is indistinguishable from this HPN, then I am done. That's the proof I am trying to eventually form. Now let's look at some neighboring hybrids. Consider, for example, H1. What is H1? H1 would mean pick n plus 1 ran bit random value and then continue this construction from level 1. What was H0? Pick n bit random value and then continue from level 0. So the only difference between H0 and H1 would be at this first step. Hybrid 0 uses g n plus 1 to perform this first step. Hybrid 1 doesn't use g n plus 1. It picks these n plus 1 bits completely randomly. So the only difference between hybrid 0 and hybrid 1 is this one use of g n plus 1. Consider hybrid 2. Hybrid 2 says pick n plus 2 random bits, continue at level 2. So pick n plus 2 random bits, continue from level 2. Between hybrid 1 and hybrid 2, the only difference is running this gm plus 1 once. So between each hi and hi plus 1, the only difference would be we are either running gm plus 1 one more time, or we are starting randomly. So essentially, this difference here would correspond to distinguishing gn plus 1's pseudo-random output from a random value of the same length. Remember, that's what we wanted to achieve. Distinguishing each neighboring hybrid should correspond to breaking some underlying assumption. The assumption here would be gm plus 1 is indistinguishable from random. Do we have polynomially many Hybrids, yes, remember our last hybrid is Pn, so we have Pn plus 1 hybrids essentially. Remember Pn was a polynomial, so we have polynomial many hybrids. We satisfy all three requirements of a hybrid proof if we define our hybrid I as this. Now, the next step would be proving this using a reduction. So this was only, let's say, a starting point for us. Next, we need to prove. What's the theorem we are going to prove? Let's write it first, and then we will do the proof soon. The theorem says, if this g n plus 1 is a secure pseudorandom generator, OK? that has n plus 1 bit output, then this 
new pseudo random generator we defined g n plus p n which is essentially this whole construction remember repeating g n plus one p n many times on the first n bits of the output taking these extras here so this construction then will be a secure pseudo random generator with n plus p n bit output so this is the theorem we are going to prove and in our proof we are going to employ this hybrid definition.